Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has explained that the government indeed knew the locations of the kidnappers, adding that security agencies were only being careful to avoid casualties. He assured Nigerians that the federal government is handling the problem of insecurity in the country. He said the insinuation in some quarters that the government was clueless was untrue, adding that the results of government's efforts would soon be evident. Well, joining us to have this conversation is Mr. Kalawale Johnson. He's a communications strategist. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson, for joining us. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Well, I, I want to start by saying that the Inspector General of Police has said that Nigeria's security challenges are insurmountable. Now, this is the Inspector General of Police. This is the guy who's in charge of all the policemen in this country. And he's saying that the security challenges are insurmountable. Uh, insurmountable. Now, again, the information minister has said that the government is doing everything it can to deal with the situation that we're facing in the country. Even though a lot of people have been criticizing the presidency, that they've not seen anything that the presidency has done in other to deal with this issue. But then there's something that we say in Nigeria that the body language of the presidency doesn't seem as though they want to put an end to the insecurity we're facing. What's your take on this? Well, first, um, when you have a well, when you have a leader who, who does not take stock, uh, who does not put in place the key performance indicators to be able to access uh, those he has uh, uh, put in positions, so what you have a, you know, may likely be the, the rule of mediocrity. I'll give you an example. When Mr. President came into the country some, uh, some last year, thereabouts, and he saw the Inspector General of Police then, the former one, and uh, the President accepted his performance by the fact that the man was not fat, that the man has not added weight. So to him, he told us as a President that uh, the fact that the man has not added weight shows that he is performing. <laughs> if that is a yardstick of of uh, measuring performance, then for the president, you can then not expect something uh, 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 more from the sitting inspector general of police who is telling you that a security challenges that has been solved elsewhere, that as is not uh, is 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 not surmountable. He is trying to explain to us that despite all the billions we sink into security, is that. The monies perhaps are going into the dustbin of victory. Mm -hmm. In the first quarter of the year, the finance ministry said that uh, we have spent over one trillion naira on security. And if, despite uh, the volume of resources we put into it, they are telling us that it is insurmountable, then I think the best thing to do is for the president to accept those they have put into office and perhaps bring those who can solve the problem into the office. But did we... Secondly, okay. we have shouted a number... Okay, we have shouted a number of times. We got here not necessarily because the nation wanted to get here, but because people in authority refuses to do the right thing at the right time. Listen to this. It is issues not properly managed or handled that dovetailed into crisis anywhere in the world. You go to the management sector, you'll be told that need issues in the board in time. If you do not, it will surely certainly dovetail to crisis. So what we have now is a crisis situation. And unfortunately, it got here because the leaders, again, refused to act in good time, refused to give commensurate consequences to crime, to criminality in a society. We have politicized criminality. We have by ourselves shaded criminals. There is something called operant conditioning learning. The social psychologists will tell you that there are different forms of learning, three basic ones. Now, the one they call operant conditioning simply means reinforcement learning. That is, B.F. Skinner explained that if someone does something and 
he doesn't get the commensurate consequences in terms of he does something bad and he's not getting the commensurate consequences. Or the consequences he gets will determine whether he will act, whether he will repeat the same thing again or not. Mm -hmm. So in this way, if he does something bad and he doesn't get commensurate consequences in terms of state acting, what you have is that person repeating. Mm -hmm. You see what? Interesting. You Let me... something? Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. I, I'm listening I to you. That. Okay, because the state refused to, to attack criminality as what it is, we found ourselves in this position. We are emboldening criminals because it appears the state is protecting some set of criminals. If a certain group has been declared or described as the fourth most deadly terrorist group in the world. Yet, the government will jump in the ship at, at every given opportunity to defend them. Have you noticed that each time any state government takes action against killer headsmen, you will get an instant response from the presidency in protection of the criminals. But each time the criminals strike and they kill people, you don't get the same response from the people. It appears that government are themselves the terrorists. I am saying this with all sense of responsibility. Well, ex how, how exactly do you mean by government being terrorists? How do you and mean? the government, sitting government in the state. This is the explanation I'm giving you. If you have some set of criminals, we are not saying all men are criminals. No, that's not possible. We grew up together in those days. men will be passing you know, by your backyard, you give them water. They pass through farmland. They don't go to destroy people's farmland. But these days, you see all forms of destruction. And each time, take, for example, on those state governments, at a time, rose in defense of the people and said we are burning so, 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 so in our state, open grazing. Immediately, uh, the federal government responded and practically attack the state government. Each time the government of any state wanted to take action, take Benway State also as an example, when they wanted to take action against killers as men, the federal government responded bitterly against such. So if you have noticed that each time the government of each of any state in the country wants to move against some certain set of people that are considered criminals, and a federal government moves in their support. What does that mean? And if this group has been described as the fourth most deadly terrorist group, yes, the government will rise in their support. So if they are called terrorists, they are supported. Okay. Let me let me let me respond to you as as the, the information minister did respond. And I want to quote him directly. He said that insinuations in some quarters was unfounded and clueless saying that the federal government was unable to deal with the situation in the country he uh, and I'm, I'm 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 curious to ask this question i know that this is more like preaching to the choir but if the if the minister for information is saying that there has been um, unfounded and clueless baseless um, rumors out there saying that the government is not handling the issue and they're incapable, they're overwhelmed. Who created room for these assumptions to take place in the first instance, if they be assumptions? The question you've asked is simple. The government said that the people are agitated, that it appears the government is overwhelmed by the situation. And the question is, who created the room for that? Simple, the government. And I've explained to you, because they are refused to act now, let me just oppose two different situations. During the last administration, all of us, we took our matches, our soldiers, and we moved against them. When there was insecurity in the country, and we called the former government clueless, and we said the government was overwhelmed. I remember that the system president now led a protest against the former president for non nipping insecurity in the past. And remember that the sitting council in Kaduna State 
said that the government was accusing the opposition of politicizing security. And he told the government, he said, they solved the problem so that we will not politicize it. Now, I hope you understand and you know that the, the level of insecurity. I think we lost Mr. Kalawali Johnson, but thank you very much, Mr. Johnson, for being part of the conversation. Unfortunately, we have to wrap things up because time is not on our side. We'll take a short break now, and when we come back, I will give you my take. When you say they know where they are and they're being care careful of what is that, because the, the kidnapped victims, they are being shot dead, I think, every day or so. Like the ones that they kidnapped from Green, other university at Kaduna. Um, I heard they killed some of the students there. And the longer they stay there, the more they get killed. Now, if you know in a, in a working country, I don't, I don't think this kind of statement will make sense. You know where these kidnappers are. We have military intelligence. Why don't you make use of your military intelligence? It's action. It's the action. It's not promising. They need action. They know where they are. So they have to go there and fish them out. The government, if they know, if they, if they know where, where, where they are, as they say, let them go for it. Go for them. Let them go for them. Today you hear there is a, a killing here. Tomorrow there is a killing there. You see, these governments have not been sincere. They are not sincere. They are not sincere. If they know where the kidnapper, uh, the kidnapper is, they have to go after them. Even if you want to put the life of innocent people at risk, there's a way we can do it because we have the best security so far in the, in the whole Africa. They know what to do already. I don't think we need to tell them what to do. We voted them in to secure us, and they are not doing their jobs. Do you understand? So them say they are being careful. To me, it sounds very silly. Here's my take. The conversation about Nigeria's woes and the recent challenges we're facing seems to be gathering momentum even more and seems to be resonating with our governors in the South. They seem to have been listening to their people and now they're banding together, blurring party lines and putting together, uh, you know, putting their citizens first. Uh, a step in the right direction would say yes, but 17 states are saying no more grazing, no more open grazing. We want restructuring. Let's look within. The senators are also falling in line and are in support. So is this not the response that we all desire? Nigerians are saying enough of this. Enough is enough. We no more shall stand by and watch lives snuffed out of the people that we call brothers and sisters. And nothing is being done by the federal government. The truth is, our leaders really know what to do. But they wait and drag their feet until we, the people, apply pressure. And it beats me why, you know, that is. But this is a start, hopefully. Um, this is not another lip service, you know, unaccompanied by actions, because we've heard our politicians make promises like this before and never kept to it. But we Nigerians are going to no longer stand by. We want to make sure that we keep talking and applying pressure until peace and safety is restored to our fatherland. I am Mariana Kong, thanking you for watching.